right. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome again to Frequently Asked Questions Friday. Uh, today, we've got Craig Henderson. He is a, an attorney here in Corpus Christi, and he is running for the 105th District Court. Great. Thank you for letting me be here. Sure. Glad you could make it. Uh, you want to just tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Sure. My name is Craig Henderson. Uh, I'm an attorney practicing here in Corpus Christi. I've uh, been an attorney for 26 years. Um, practicing predominantly in civil trial law. I'm a board certified lawyer, and Greg, as you know, with board certification, mm -hmm. we've tried a certain number of cases, uh, we've taken our exams, and we get recertified in five years. Uh, I also am a, a, a past municipal court judge, mm -hmm. um, so I was a municipal court judge in City Corpus Christi for over seven years. And I've been, I practice civil law predominantly, uh, represent plaintiffs, I've represented defendants, seen quite a bit over the two years. So you, you've seen both sides? Yes, sir. Which is kind of, I guess, what you kind of need if you're going to be a judge. I think so. I think it's really important that a judge understands when mm -hmm. you're sitting there what it means to the parties that they're going to and understands what it means for those parties when you walk into a court, be they a defendant, be they a plaintiff, or whoever it is. I think it's important that you have that basic understanding of what's going on. All right. Okay. Where, where are you from originally? Uh, we moved to Corpus Christi uh, in 1969, uh, so I grew up here. Uh, so you were how old in 69? 69, I was four. You're four. Yeah, so okay. I'm, I'm 52 years old right now. All right. Uh, my, my dad, uh, Bruce Henderson, who's a doctor here in town for a long time, at Christopher Children's Hospital. So I grew up here in Corpus my five siblings. All right. But, but you're from where? Are you born where? I was born in Ohio. In Ohio, okay, sir. All right. Well, that's a good place. Uh, Okay, you went to school here locally? I went to St. James and Cartwright. That's right. And I went to high school up in Austin. My sisters went to Ray and Carrie. Okay. And college? University of Texas. And law school? University of Houston. University of Houston. Okay. All right. Well, uh, now your your opponent is uh, is Jack Poulter. Yes, sir. Uh, why should uh, the voters uh, vote for you over Jack Poulter? Well, and I get that question a lot, and what I have told people, and I've been asked, the question is, why are you running against Jack Poulter? And I think it's really important for people to understand, from my perspective, I'm not running against him. My decision would run for this office. To be perfectly frank, it had very little to do with Jack Poulter. It had a lot to do with what it was that I wanted to do, and what I wanted to do to get back in this community has been so generous with me over my Plus six, 26 years of practice. Uh, I want to be a fair judge. I, I promise to run a, an open and fair and efficient court. And I think that's why people should vote for me. I think they should vote for me uh, because I understand what it means uh, to have a case in the court, understand what the stakes are, understand why it is so important that when a litigant walks in, or a defendant in a criminal case walks in, that they understand that the person sitting up on that bench is going to be fair. It's going to give them a fair shot to present their case and to defend themselves. And so I, I don't offer a reason why I'm better than Jack Culture. I offer myself to the voters and say, I think this is why you should vote. Is there a feeling maybe that Jack is not necessarily fair? No, I would I wouldn't say that. I've, I've never heard somebody say that he's not a fair judge. Okay. Uh, the only thing I would say is, from a plaintiff's lawyer's point of view, is a Republican a Republican judges seem to rule rule more for the defendants when they go to trial and in hearings than they do for the plaintiffs. But for the injured people, they tend to rule with the insurance companies and the corporations, and so. We just generally feel like we don't get a fair shake with Republican judges. So I, I, I know you don't want to accuse him of that. I, and I'm not accusing him of that either. I'm just saying, in general, our Republican judges are not quite as what we would call fair as as our Democrat. Right. And it's, and it's you know, it's really important, I think, when uh, somebody walks into a courtroom. And you know this as well as I know this. We can never guarantee results to anybody. Right. But what you want to have people feel when they walk out of that courtroom is, win or lose, they walk out and say, well, at least I know 
I got a fair shake. I got a fair shake. Somebody listened to what I had to say, and I think they really concerned. And, and that's what I can promise. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, that was pretty easy. Um, anything else you want to add or say? Or? Uh, a couple of things. One, I'm a big believer in our judicial system. I think it's the best system. I'm a big believer in our, our right to the jury. Uh, it's in our federal constitution, guaranteed. It's in our state constitution, guaranteed. And so there's two things that normal folks can do to really support our constitution. Two easy things. Vote and serve on juries. And I, you know, I, I plead with all, all of your listeners, everybody listening to this, is do those two things and you've done a huge service to your country. Make sure you vote on November 6th. You get that summons. I know it can be painful sometimes. It can be inconvenient, but serve on that jury. And what you've then done is you've done uh, your part in supporting our Constitution. So, again, I appreciate the time. Just let me visit. Yeah, and, and it does seem like our Constitution is under attack lately. You know, sometimes we take it for granted, uh, but it is the, one of the greatest documents mm -hmm. ever written, and it's all of our responsibility to, to protect it. These are the two easy ways that all of us can uh, All right, we're going to come back to that. Let me just make a couple of announcements real quick. Um, our YouTube winner for our Labor Day giveaway is JT Ramos, and we've already contacted him, so he knows he, knows he won. Um, also, tomorrow is the second annual Addicted to Recovery 5K in Cold Park, and we will be out there tomorrow uh, with the folks that we sponsored. So uh, come out and enjoy the race. Um, third, uh, don't forget about our scholarship. First place winner is $2,500. Second place is $1,500. Third place is $1,000. Go to our website, go to the scholarship page. It tells you how to enter. It's real simple. You got to write an essay. Um, and I say this every week, but we really get tired of people from New York and the East Coast and California and the West Coast winning this thing. We would love for local people, some local people to, to win this scholarship. So please go in or you, you guys have just as much chance of winning as somebody from New York. So um, please go in. Uh, lastly, to get back to the point you were talking about is voting. Um, I'm going to remind everybody again, the deadline to register to vote is October 9th. And don't just assume that you're registered to vote. Uh, because as I said before, a lot of people here in the last election went went down to vote, and when they showed up, they found out they got kicked off the voter rolls. And so, especially if you hadn't voted in a in a while, you may have been kicked off the voter rolls. But even if you have, there's just, it seems to be something behind the scenes where people are getting booted off the, off the voter rolls, and the U.S. Supreme Court just let Ohio do it and told Ohio, that's fine, you can kick all these people off the voter rolls. So, even if you've been registered before, don't assume you're registered. So go go double check, and we'll put the link up again so you can double check, make sure you are registered to vote, because you don't want to show up for an early voting or uh, worse on election day and find out, hey, you can't vote, you're not registered. So as Craig Anderson just said, there's two things we can do to support our Constitution. One of them is vote, and the other is serve on juries. Well. You're not going to be able to vote if you're not registered. So please double check that. Um, and as as is apparent to most people, our Constitution is under under attack right now. So we need to uphold our Constitution. We need to protect it. And the only way we're going to do that is to vote. And you can't vote if you don't register. So please, after Chris puts the link up, go check it. Make sure you register to vote. If you're not Start trying to register right now because you're going to run out of time or other obstacles may come up. They don't like your ID or they don't like, you know, whatever. And so, it, you know, you just want to take care of that now so you're, you're not trying to make sure you got all your IDs and stuff at the very last second. So, all right. Well, Craig, you anything else you want to add? No, just again, I appreciate the time. Okay. Well, thanks for coming by. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, that's it for this week. Um, uh, thanks, everybody, and we will see you again next week for FAQ Friday.